First, a couple quick channel notes. First, uh, I'm going to be releasing videos on Monday and Thursday. Monday will be some type of electronics repair video. Thursday will be some type of exploration or outdoor video. A mine, uh, an abandoned building, something like that. So that's the first note. Um, second, the capacitors and the outside foil, I, I kind of screwed that up the way I presented it. I didn't complete what I was saying that with the old capacitors, I understand that the, the line on the old capacitors marks the the outside foil, which is basically like a shield like the can that an electrolytic is in. But what I failed to mention in that was that um, the newer capacitors being so much smaller probably don't, in 99% of cases, don't need, because the physical size is so much smaller, they don't need to identify which side is the uh, outside foil for shielding. And let's see, there's something else, but I can't remember what it was. Anyway, this is a this is a long-awaited video on this guy here. This came from an abandoned uh, company town, and the owner told me I could take it. And I would like to get it working so the owner could see it working. I think he'd get a real kick out of it. And he's really into the, all the modern politics, and I think he would really like to see the debates on this thing. And I'll, let me video a little sample of it. This is an RCA KCS, I figured, I believe I figured it was a KCS 97, somewhere in there. The markings are completely gone. This thing is just filled with rat crap. Uh, it was in a rotten old house. Maybe I'll insert a clip of that video where I found it right here. So I just want to step back and get some footage of that right there because this right here, this right here, this is something you're never going to see anywhere else. You're never going to see that picture anywhere else. Dial in on that a little bit. Well, I got good news on this one. Uh, we have filament load. You can see that um, it's pulling down our voltage there. So let's bring this up to 5 volts or so. It's possible that it's gone to... Oh! Hello! Now how about that? And we checked it out, or I checked it out before I loaded it in the car, and the CRT tested good. This is a 1950 set, and the company town was closed in the 70s, like 75. So the odds are that this probably wasn't used for more than four or five years, if that, and very rarely. So we got to get that in there so that the channel video clone channels don't uh, hopefully don't steal this video. Um, CRT tested good. Thing was in a house without a roof on it. It's in really bad shape. We'll take a look at the inside. Here's a look at the inside. Um, I'm going to squirt all of these tube sockets with uh, contact cleaner. Then I'm going to repopulate the tubes. And then I'm going to bring it up on the Variac today and we'll see exactly what kind of results we get. I would just like to see it work. I have no intention of restoring this thing. It is trashed. All of these are frozen. And I've been spraying them 
every couple weeks with oil with the WD-40 and contact cleaner and they have not that one's broken loose but the rest of these have not broken loose so that's not a good sign I do have the factory service manual on this so uh, not that I'm gonna go that deep look at the light bulb is missing there so anyway uh, what I'd like to do today Maybe what I'll do is I'll just put the, um, I'll just bring it up on the Variac with nothing in it. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll put the 5U4 in it and see what happens. What are these two tubes down here? Horizontal, vertical output and sink I can't read that's too small anyway the 5u4 goes here and that'll give us an idea if our filters are shorted so okay gone on too long too much rambling let's just get into the action assistant FBI director William Sweeney on the arrest of New York and New Jersey bombing suspect Ahmed Rahami he was injured and underwent surgery today. Investigators tell CBS News he may have learned how to make bombs online. His bombs were a near carbon copy of Al Qaeda's How to Build a Bomb in the Kitchen of Your Mom. Variac is here. I got the kilowatt on the Variac. Uh, I got a three amp fuse in there. So ready to check our voltage off the transformer here. One of the worst things that could happen with this would be either that transformer or power transformer blow up or the flyback be no good. This transformer here is already coming apart. So uh, probably if the transformer is no good or expires, I'll probably just pull the CRT and put this whole damn thing in the trash. The lowest voltage um, that the kilowatt will run on it is about 47 volts so we're gonna start there and see what happens I want to put a date on this today is uh, Monday September 19th hopefully if I have this thing working I'll have this out on Wednesday two days of one week until the first debate so let's get going here let's see uh, what we got here This is going to be tough. Okay, I've got .04 amps at 40 volts. And I'm coming up. And that should be Point zero one seven amps basically at a hundred volts or so so let's see what we got here the the meter is on AC set this down here and I'll start probing the 5u4 286 volts two hundred and eighty six volts so we got two hundred and eighty six volts there two hundred and eighty six volts there and it looks like I got about five and six volts on some other other spots so let's put a tube in it and see what happens all right, I kind of got this arranged a little bit better so that I can see that. Uh, a friend sent me a, a full tube complement for this set. So let me get this open. So here they are. Got our 5U4 in here. Um, here we go. Get this up around 
40 volts where this starts to work, okay. Now already we see a big difference in the current draw there if I pull this out. Put this back in. I can't believe the thing would even be conducting at 40 volts. I don't think the filament would get hot enough. Here we go, cranking her up. Ah, there the filament finally started conducting. I'm at 80 volts and I'm at 850 milliamps. That's, um, and see it dropping there as the capacitor reforms. That's pretty significant. I think if I had just plugged this in, I think the uh, tube would have just expired. Okay, I'm going to let this reform for a minute. I'm not going to touch it. Okay, we're we're down to 0.34 amps, 340 milliamps versus 850, so it's dropped quite a bit. And I'm measuring the B plus here, and it's 321 volts. And I notice this filter is getting warm. The problem with this is, and I think I screwed up, I should have put a solid state substitute in here because what happens is you got to get this voltage up so high in order for the filaments to get hot enough to conduct that you're, you're up at 300 volts by the time that happens. So next time I do this, I use a solid state replacement. And all you do is to make a solid state replacement is you gut this socket out and put solder two one in four thousand sevens in there so but um, this is creeping up is that capacitor reforms and it's it is getting warm okay to demonstrate that this one is measuring uh, 104 this one is measuring 88. It's now up to 106. So th these capacitors are shot. They need to be replaced. This is definitely these are bad. But if I could just get it to work with those, um, I'll do it. If I have to just cut them off and solder something new or just solder something new across the back of it to get it to work that's fine with me. I'm almost tempted to get the air compressor out and blow these sockets out. Okay something's happened here. Our current has still haven't touched the variac. Current is is uh, creeping back up. B plus is dropping down. Oh, now the B-plus is going back up again. And this sucker's... This sucker's cooking right now. Alright, if I just let this go, this capacitor would vent. This capacitor is now 134. This capacitor is now 88 still. So... This sucker is getting ready to EOL. This this one right here. It's hot. Oh boy, I'm detecting a bodge job. I, I reached in here to check something and I came up with this. Detecting a bodge job here. Horizontal loss. The capacitor is still warm, but it's cooling down. Horizontal oscillator has been installed. Damper has been installed. Horizontal output has been installed. We have uh, a cathode current test meter here. 
and this is a 6BQ6, so 90 milliamps. So I've turned the Variac up to about 100, let's go up to about 110 volts. Um, one thing that I've learned not to do is have the horizontal section connected when you bring something up on the Variac because a lot of times if you bring the voltage up slowly the horizontal oscillator won't start and it'll destroy the horizontal output tube. I've had it happen to me a bunch of times so that's why you, one reason you generally don't see me bring stuff up on um, a Variac. So let's go here. Seven hundred and fifty milliamps. I gotta watch this real close. Okay, here we go. I certainly did not hear high voltage come up, and that's too high. Yeah, buddy. Um, okay, we do not have horizontal either. I didn't get all the tubes in right or something. Uh, that one does not appear to be glowing. Let me check this out. Okay, it's glowing now. I hear some horizontal. All right, I don't know how this is showing up, but you can see that I got my test adapter stacked here and I definitely have a nice horizontal. Well, it's not nice. I don't know quite what you would call that, but uh, it, it's there is horizontal drive and it's not gonna cause this, so. And also I noticed when I hooked this up I could hear some like hissing almost. I smell something burning here. This something is getting ready to blow up. Okay, I haven't even got the first stage working yet which is a little bit depressing of course the horizontal is the most difficult stage because it's the high voltage high frequency stuff um, is not not real encouraging but the horizontal works the vertical works power supply and the video works you can drive a straight composite signal into it and skip the IF and tuner and all that and the set will produce a picture but we got a problem here with the horizontal and it could be a shorted yoke uh, it could be a shorted capacitor but something's not working right here where on the back side of this it's not it's drawing too much current I disconnected that it's not that I the flyback doesn't look like it would be bad, but you know, looks don't tell you much. So I don't know, let me think about this for a little bit. I guess the next step is the chassis has to come out and the boost capacitor and all the other filter capacitors around this circuit need to be checked. So we'll just take a look at this. While we, while we let the, ooh. While we let the ice cream truck roll out for a few minutes here. Maybe we should get this in there too. Right there up against that nice, nice cake of rat feces. Look at that, ooh. 
Talk about a delicacy. Oh, hell yes. Here's to good health. You know, I was thinking that maybe the reason the knobs are all missing off of this is because it had a problem and was condemned. This set might not be redeemable. You know, it gets even better. You got to see the chassis. Stand by. Sprague Adam. And you can tell that's dried out. That thing doesn't weigh anything. Here's another one. Who crap? Sixty seven seventeen. So some some tech, let's have a look at this here. And I'm seeing this for the first time. So this here, these are our two filter capacitors right here. This one is the big long one that was not getting hot. This is the short one that was getting hot. So you can see here, the in-house tech, whoever worked on this set, Never remove the old one. And yeah, that's the reason why you remove the old one, because it shorts. But it probably went open, so whoever fixed it, you can see they just, they just paralleled a bunch of capacitors in here. We got one here. All good stuff. All sprig. Actually, we got two here. We got two here for this pin here, this pin here. Then we got this one, which is this pin here. And then this red wire comes down to this one. So you can see this one is the same thing where they just paralleled four capacitors in here. But man, this, this thing is in a sorry state. <coughs> this is the worst. Um, this is definitely the worst resurrection. If this thing ever works again, it will be a resurrection. Boy, this is horrible. Ugh, look at those pots. Okay, we could get this yoke. I think it's plugged in right there. We could get this yoke and get it on the ring tester. You know what, I can deal with some nasty shit, literally, but this thing is just gross. I mean, it really is.
You know, if you were a tech in the day and you came out to repair this and this looked like this, you'd tell a customer to, to get a new TV, you wouldn't work on this. This is like when a customer brings their car into a shop to be worked on and the mechanic goes in and the car is full of roaches. No one wants to work on that shit. This is horrible. Look at that rat turd. All right, I'll work on this. I gotta admit, I'm I'm digging through this sewer here in hopes of finding the knobs. Um, that would really be a pleasant surprise, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I found one knob and one screw, but... Ah, oh, man. This is... This is really, really... horrific. So, ugh. The smell is giving me a headache. There's a term for people who are aroused by feces and excrement. I don't remember what it is. Maybe defecation? Anyway, I assure you, I do not have wood right now. This is not a pleasant experience. At this point, I'm wondering if this thing will ever work again. Um, look at the, gnaw, the rat gnawings on that. When I hit some of this stuff with air, you can see this coil started to come apart. That's why I don't like to use air on anything. But I think what we need to do is fire it back up. We don't need the chassis in this set to fire it up. And pull the damper tube out. I, if I remember a trick, if the boost capacitor is shorted, we will get cathode current with the damper removed. But I have a feeling this is going to need a complete recap. And when I say a complete recap, I mean everything you see here. And I just don't know if I'm willing to do that on this thing, especially with all these pots frozen. I mean, i got other sets around here that are... I know everyone wants to see this work. I, I would too. It's a one hell of a challenge, but come on, let's be real. All right, we're up and running. We got an absolutely beautiful horizontal uh, going into the horizontal waveform going into the grid of the horizontal output tube. I know it's not good for the tube to run it with the plate cap off. That's why we're minimizing this. If we connect our plate, we get way too much cathode current, so I'm going to try pulling this out. Pulling the damper out. And we don't get any, well, maybe a tiny bit. So that would suggest that maybe our boost capacitor, the boost filter cap, is not shorted. Um, next thing to do is to check the yoke. See if the yoke is uh, ringing. Connected to the top coil horizontal. 11 rings good. Connected to the bottom coil, 12 rings good. Uh, that's encouraging. And the vertical has these dampening resistors across it. I don't know if we would get any rings on this. Yeah, but we're not, no, no rings, but we're not working on the vertical right now. We're working with the horizontal. I wonder if we could ring this um, flyback. Another thing this thing will actually do is drive the horizontal output, and that right there is not a good look. Um, in fact, it says DC short doesn't even say AC short, it says DC short. Huh. 
need to take a look at the um, schematic. Okay, I had it connected wrong. Um, so here you can see the um, I got it connected right now. This this thing is for solid state equipment, not not tube equipment. So I got it connected right now. You can see we can actually Well, it was You can see when I do that, it goes to AC short. I was drawing an arc up there. Mm. So the flyback seems good and the yoke seems okay. Okay, so the flyback seems okay even if, even if I drive it with the uh, horizontal output test and the yoke seems okay so what is going on here it must be a capacitor time to clean up I need a shower I can't handle this anymore and sit down and look at the schematic what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray uh, WD-40 in all of these pots and let them soak overnight and we'll come back to this tomorrow hopefully okay it is a KCS 96, I went through this whole damn thing practically, and here it is right here. Uh, Compton, what an appropriate name, Compton. So full of shit, uh, literally. Metal Oak. So, these are these service manuals are so detailed and so beautiful and here's what I was talking about so usually the B plus comes through here and through the damper one way diode tube up to pin 4 if the boost filter which is this cap right here shorted when you pull the damper out, you'll still be getting DC through here, up through the, which we weren't, so this is not shorted. But I'm looking for some other capacitor here that would cause this um, issue that we're having. And I, I don't know what this 560 picofarad and this 330 picofarad, I don't know what kind of caps those are. I don't think this has any disc caps in it. At least I don't see any disc caps in this. So it could be the, the posted stamp type capacitor. Those things do short. ACS 96 and those are them right there that's the 560 and that's the 330 no markings on that except for a yeah that's a 560 all right blue green it's just kind of looking at these and uh, is that a is that a date code of 1970 it's interesting dry electrolytic sprague sprague atom north adams mass nineteen seventy if if that's a date code of nineteen seventy it's kind of interesting because that would have been right at the end of the run of that town I think that town was pretty much 
company town was pretty much wrapped up and everyone was moved out by 1974 or 5 so this is kind of interesting this is dated 1955 so 15 years 55 65 70 um, it's very interesting A CRT tested good so I don't know. A word that uh, there's been any damage uh, of uh, any significance as a result, but a little shaker there uh, this morning at 3-2 here in the L.A. area. Got a problem, Topanga Canyon. Bank KNX 1070's John Baird is live with the story. The Wells Chairman this morning, a 3.2 uh, hit about 745 near Hawthorne, fell as far away as Glendale. This is listener Rhonda from El Segundo. It was so different. It wasn't like the normal, you know, just rolling or just a big shake. It was kind of like a combination of both. We've uh, not heard anything that indicating that there's been any damage as a result of this uh, small quake. 805 at KNX. That okay, so this is going to be interesting today because there have actually been three or four earthquakes. There was one last night. Uh, at about 8 or 8.30 and then there was a couple this morning at like 3 in the morning so I have had hardly any sleep and even though they've been a couple cities away from me um, they kinda woke me up so anyway let's get back into this I've uh, <clears throat> been researching the schematic and let me first state that I don't want to recap this. All I want to do is get this thing working. I want to do the absolute minimum to see if I can get it working. I don't know if it's possible, okay? Um, I'm not going to recap this whole thing. There are 12 capacitors just on that vertical board. That vertical board is nothing but capacitors. So I want to try and see if I could get the horizontal and high voltage working today first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check this boost filter right here. This is the .047 at 1000 volt boost filter. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and desolder this. I'm going to heat this up. This makes a mess. I'm going to heat this up with a soldering iron and then use the compressor to blow the solder off of it. Um, so let's see. Alright, let's pop a new tip. On the uh, on the gun here, are we ready? It's always fun when these things are new. Here we go. All right, so. Here's what we're going to do. I don't know if I can do this with the camera in the way or not. I'm going to let this get nice and hot. And what we're going to do is we're going to lube it up. We're going to put some fresh going to put some fresh solder on this thing because this old solder gets so crystallized and crappy. Uh, let's see, where did my... Okay, now let me see if I can destroy my new camera. I don't recommend doing this <laughs> if it's a piece of equipment you care about. <laughs> but you can see there, it got all the solder off of it. Okay, uh, let me take with a pair of pliers and pick these stupid things you can see what a mess this made um, yeah I gotta clean all that crap off of there but let me for now let me see if I can 
get these things out of here. Okay, on the, on this paper one here, if you would believe this, I'm getting a nice wide eye opening at uh, about 0 .047, and I go with my leakage all the way up to uh, 450 volts here, and no leakage. And the same thing with that red postage stamp type. Uh, that's a 500 and something picofarad. That one's measuring 0.0005. Nice wide eye opening with no leakage. I am surprised. I don't know what else could be wrong with this thing. Same thing with this one. It's right on, uh, right on a little over 300 picofarads. No leakage. When you do this, when you test with one of these capacitor testers and you leave the capacitor in circuit, you have to make sure that you hook the, the ground here up to the lead that's still connected to the chassis or it'll go funky on you. Alright, let's, um, let's do a couple voltage checks here. I, I looked at this on the oscilloscope yesterday, this uh, the grid, and it looked good. But I should probably check the voltage and make sure there's actually enough drive there, so let's do that. And we don't have hardly any drive. What the hell? Um, it's going to check the drive and the frequency. Just because there's plenty enough signal there doesn't mean that the dry let me see what's going on okay I had forgot to plug the tube back in we're at negative 24 volts that's good that looks good so let's check the frequency and see if it's way off frequency okay it's right on 14 I'm gonna turn the horizontal hold control So, frequency is right on, and yeah, I'm going through a, a 10 to 1 scope probe on this. I'm not feeding, and I smell burning resistors again. What is going on here? Oh, I see smoke. Boy, that sucker right there. I wonder what that's for. Okay, this resistor here is smoking because I do not have the plate cap connected to the horizontal output tube. And because I don't have the plate cap connected, it's pulling a ton of current through this right here, which is that 6800 that was smoking. Um, without, without this connected, it's pulling it down through here, which is not good for the tube. It's not good for the resistor. It's not good for anything. So uh, i got to figure out what's going on here. I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, a little bit stumped on this one unless maybe he sent me a bad damper tube or a bad horizontal output tube I am um, I'm stumped I really am because I've checked we got good drive going to the tube all of this stuff over here checks out flyback checks out the yoke checks out unless there's something I'm just totally missing here uh, I don't see what it could be, so maybe it's time to try and find a 6AX4 if I got one around somewhere. I, I, it doesn't look like I damaged this resistor. It went down in value a little bit, but it's still within, eh, it's, well, it's within 20% tolerance. I tried a bunch of different damper tubes and a couple different horizontal output tubes with no change. I am really stumped on this one. 
with the whining squealing sound it makes uh, almost makes me think it's like the yoke or the flyback or a capacitor but I'm not finding it and that's not testing bad and I can't just let it run because it's gonna it's gonna burn up the tubes real quick and here we go with another earthquake and that one was bigger turned a single nickel of your personal earnings you haven't found that one kind of rattled and shook everything around me and I'm outside so I think it may be time to put this aside and go do something else like put everything on the floor reporting live John Gear KNX 1070 news radio hey marine on leave here now change earthquake it was so different okay KNX you're repeating stuff how about the one that just just happened right now at like uh 931. Police and the LA County Sheriff's Department are looking for the man that. Uh... 1003. There are two more capacitors here up at the top, and um, I have to remove this to to get to them to test them. Um. Oh, I went and I disconnected the this this coil. This is the uh, width coil, and I did a ring test and I did a current test on it. It doesn't seem shorted. Not, I don't know what it should ring out at, but it seemed okay. So uh, to remove this whole damn thing, um, crap. Seventy News Radio. Good morning. I'm Chris Seaton's. And I'm Linda Nunez. Here's what's happening at 10:03. Swarm of earthquakes has rattled an area centered on the cities of G uh, Gardena and Hawthorne over the past 18 hours. The latest quake struck just after 9:30 and measured 3.0. Before that, a 3.2 quake hit around 7:45. Oh. These quakes are all 3.2 or less and have been felt as, as far away as Glendale. A young Marine on leave to see his family dies after being shot in South. Well, I don't care what they are. They're 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 a annoying and um, it's like a bunch of small tornadoes rolling over your house all right I am removing these capacitors I'm gonna check these capacitors I checked that resistor uh, all the resistors are within 20 percent so they're they're good well this is weird with those capacitors disconnected I still got 200 milliamps of cathode current but I got high voltage So I don't know what is going on here. Okay, I just noticed that this drive pot here was tightened down all the way like somebody just, not pot, it's a capacitor, it's a variable cap, but someone had, and I loosened that up, you can see when I tighten it down there, and when I loosen it up and you hear the high voltage come up. So, and then if I adjust the horizontal frequency, it changes even more. So, I'm just wondering if this thing needs a full alignment. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Am I just chasing, am I chasing a problem where somebody thought that it, that was a screw that needed to be tightened? Okay, this is a 6... DQ6, which is the same as a 6BQ6, except that's a heavier duty tube. And licking my licking my finger, and it doesn't doesn't seem like it's excessive current. I mean, it. So I'm about 140 milliamps. Uh, 13.8 volts on the cathode, and they call for which is the same thing, but they don't give you amps. They call 11.9 volts here, which is the same thing as measuring the current. And I've got high voltage now. And it seems quite high. So, I don't know what the hell is going on with this. Maybe one of those capacitors was shorted, and when I heated it up with the soldering gun it opened up I don't know I don't know not enough sleep and we're at almost 17 kilovolts here still a little bit excessive cathode current but I'm not gonna worry about it at this point uh, it's 
producing high voltage and I don't know what I did to it. Must have been something here was shorted or something and when I heated it up with the iron it broke free. Weird. Okay, I repopulated the vertical tubes down there and I can hear the vertical running. I hear it. At least I think this is where it's coming from. Yeah, you could feel it there. So the vertical's working, it's just now I gotta get these pots broken loose because one of these is the vertical hold. And I got it, had to use vice grips, but I got it. Uh, I'll turn it, you can listen here. Definitely working. Okay, it's party time. And most of all, down here. Boy, that really gets the smell going. Woo, baby. All right, so the way the bottom comes off of this set, or the glass comes off. You take that bracket off the bottom and it slides out the bottom. It took me a minute to figure that out. Oh, what a mess. Someone here is demanding suicide over the odor of all of this uh, rodent feces. Okay, this is a poor man's capacitor tester. I've showed this before. This is how I do this when I want to just do it quick and dirty. We have an amplifier. The phone is feeding music into the amplifier. We have a speaker hooked up to the amplifier. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the capacitors in series with the speaker. And a good ESR, 100 microfarad, we probably wouldn't even hear... Um, a reduction in volume or bass. The smaller values, five microfarads, you're going to just hear, you know, treble coming through like a tweeter. 10, 15 microfarads, mid range. So here we go. Okay, so that's one side going to ground. Let's just go around these capacitors and check. Holy crap, well that was probably the end of that amplifier. <laughs> okay, I have, a, I have a recommendation for myself. First of all, don't do this when you're tired. And don't do this shit with the power turned on. Damn, I actually had left this thing turned on. All right, let me, let me go through this and discharge all these damn capacitors. I can't believe the power amplifier took that 400 volts going through the <laughs> output stage. That one's good. That's 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 just dry electrolytic. These dry electrolytics, they don't dry out. Imagine that. Well, that's all six of them. They're all good. So, 
These these dry electrolytics, I, I hardly ever see these go bad. These Sprague Atom, they're kind of big, but they don't dry out. Maybe they short sometimes. I haven't seen it. So our electrolytics are good. I'm going to leave it alone. Remember, I'm trying to go for the minimum here. Okay. Um, high voltage is up. But unfortunately, there is no CRT filament here I can see. Uh, oh crap, you mean I've been dealing with all this and now the stupid CRT is not going to work? The CRT went bad after all this? Oh, let me check this out. Okay, this thing is something else. I measure the black and brown with a disconnected, there's 6.6 .6 volts there. I, I take the socket apart because I think it's not making contact in the socket. The, I ohm the CRT out, it's 2 ohms, so the filament's good. When I hook, the, hook it up, when I put it under a load, the voltage goes down to zero. So I don't know what is going on. We got a burnt wire. I think this switch right here might be like phono or I'm not sure what this switch is. Let me play with that because sometimes these have a phono mode that turns a CRT voltage off. And that's exactly what this does. This, this goes up to a phono switch here which is not working. So I just manually grounded it. I would like to see some activity here, please. Rock and roll, baby. Turn it on. I repopulated the tubes. Something started smoking. smoking before I put the tubes in it. Shit. And I, I had a very, very light raster on it and fuck. Okay, here we go. So something was arcing and then it made a burning, a lot of smoke coming out. Now of course it's not going to do it because it's out of the chassis and the thing has already burned up. Wait, I see smoke. Where is it coming from? Oh crap, there's a resistor down there. Okay. Okay, that smoking resistor has something to do with the video output tube because when I populated it, it wasn't smoking. And then when I put this video output tube in, let's see if I can get it in now. And now the new, there's a news alert that there might be a storm coming. Earthquake, storm, so you can watch. The, this is the drop across that resistor. So, um, 
Oh crap. Okay, um, there's that resistor, 560 ohm across the capacitor. I hope the arcing I didn't hear was the contrast control getting burned up. I wonder if this capacitor is shorted over biasing this tube causing that. I hope it didn't destroy the contrast control. Jeez, C61. So here's that capacitor, this one with the hole in it. And yeah, sure as hell it's shorted. 230 volts on that side, 230 volts on that side. I hope it didn't damage the contrast control. It over-biased the video output tube and, oh man. Okay, I think we got lucky. I cut that capacitor out and it is dead shorted. I mean, zero ohms. And that's my cathode and I'm adjusting the contrast there and it looks okay. Uh, turning it down. I think I lucked out. Now that resistor is most definitely damaged. We can ohm that out here. Let that voltage drop off. I, I guarantee it went down in resistance. It's supposed to be 560 ohms, it's 474. It's gonna work okay for us, for this. So here's our first shorted capacitor, boy. That could have done some damage. It's a 0.1 at 600. And looking at on a ohm meter, it's 0 .0, it's 0 0.3 ohms, which is shorted. Totally shorted. Okay, here's a 104 out of a set I EOL 0 0.1. Um, just try and put it back together. See if it does any better. You know, I remember checking this in a previous video. And I checked it with the Beltron, and it was strong. That's why I brought it home. I would not have dealt with this shit-infested mouse nest if I it would have had a weak CRT. And I'm looking at it, and all my voltages are good. My high voltage is right on. All my biases are right on after that uh, shorted capacitor and I'm wondering what the hell is going on and I don't have the audio tubes in over here the tuner tubes but that shouldn't matter with a raster so I put this on it and with the filament voltage cranked oh and now it's showing a, a G1 short when my high voltage up at like 8 volts I'm only showing this much emission and I don't know what the hell is going on this is really depressing I guess I should have checked it before I, I I guess I should have checked it before I, uh, I, I spent all this time on it. Damn near a full day at this point. Um, let's give it a little love tap, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's got rat turds inside of it. This is depressing. Nothing. Um, very, very bizarre. Someone asked me what the rejuvenator does. It burns, basically blasts the cathode to, to melt it down and get some more emitting material. Um, this thing is dead. This CRT is bad. Believe it or not, it's a little better now. 
And when I say it's it's dead, I mean it's dead. Here's what we're going to do with it. Going to populate all the tubes. The speaker is shot. This focus thing, I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Populate all the tubes, get a speaker on it, um, see if we could get it to work. I'll put a brightener on it. Let's just see if we could get a picture on it. Uh, let's see if we can get those debates on it. It'll be a horrible picture, but the debates are going to be a horrible picture anyway. I don't know if this will actually show up, which apparently it won't, but it's actually passing a signal and it's in sync. Vertical and horizontal are on and I got the circle on there. It's all stretched out. Let me find a brightener. Okay, I know most of you know what this is, but if you're new to TV, old TV, this is what's called a brightener. This is a band-aid. Uh, it was pretty much designed to slap on a customer's TV to get them through the week until the shop could order the proper CRT and get it in for the customer. Um, if you ever are looking at a vintage TV to buy and you see one of those on it, say no thank you. I'm uh, not interested. I don't know, can we see it now? It did brighten it up quite a bit. You can see the circle there. Volkswagen Jetta is now more fun to drive than ever. Allow us to illustrate. Little help here? It comes standard with a lean, mean, turbocharged engine. With even more horsepower to really get your park racing. Yeah! And this Jetta is amazingly fuel efficient, so the fun doesn't have to stop. Hey, can you give me a little more? Thanks, bud. Hurry in, at least this 20... Jetta S for just $139 a month. Low gain. Very soft. I'm driving all the power I got into it from the BT modulator. Very weak picture, low contrast. That could be a weak CRT too. But it'll do. We'll get the debates on it. Basically, just to summarize, we had one bad capacitor and another mystery problem. Um, there's a lack of gain. The AGC control doesn't do anything, so the contrast is real low. I'm not going to go any further with it. The CRT is weak. I just wanted to get this going to have the debates on it. It actually appears right now, this being Tuesday, uh, September 20th, that they are going to debate next week. So we're going to do an EOL. And we're going to fire this up and get some video of them debating on this sucker right here. So that's a KCS, what was it, 96A, uh, the long road to recovery. And there's still more problems, but I'm, 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 not, I'm not going there. This video's gone on long enough. I doubt many people have even watched this deep into it. I was sitting out here watching this last night and it had pretty much brightened up to the point where I could pull the brightener off of it and it still looked okay except it's very low contrast so I started checking around and I noticed the AGC pot down here wasn't doing anything so I measured the voltage coming out of it and is either a hundred percent or zero so I'm going to pull the chassis back out. It's a 500k pot and I'll put this this in there. I'll just run the wires out the bottom so we can play with it. I don't know if that's a problem because it has zero effect, but it's like it's deaf, low contrast, low gain. I'm actually getting to the point where I'd like to see it work a little better right now. It's working so good. The other thing on this guy I noticed is this guy holds a charge. Where most of these don't, I got whacked a couple times real good off of this thing. And uh, it won't kill you, but it makes you jump. 
so and, uh, it sat overnight that's why it's kind of dead right now I'm trying a 10 BP4 as a test CRT just so I can try and figure out what's wrong with the IF without taking the thing in and out of the chassis because I don't want to neck that thing and um, it's not working I don't know I would think with 21 kilovolts or whatever is on it but maybe maybe it needs a focus magnet or something too I, I don't know I'm not quite sure how this CRT works compared to the other one oh it's a the 10 BP4 uses an ion trap right oh crap I don't have an ion trap okay the problem is in the tuner uh, I'm feeding the IF 45.75 megahertz from here into the uh, tuner and the AGC started working and I can actually if I that's about let's see uh, 500 microvolts so that's 500 microvolts right there um, it's a little bit light but I can adjust the AGC here now and it doesn't have a huge impact but it does have some but when I go up to a full uh, let's see 5,000 microvolts you can see I can just overload it there and then I can bring the AGC down to where it so the problem is in the tuner um, so with this thing on max on channel 5 I get uh, about the same as I get with uh, 50, mic 50 to 100 microvolts into the IF so the tuner is dead the tuner is not tuning it's not the front end is shot maybe it got hit by lightning I don't know no snow gotta check the tuner out <laughs> all right so after sitting here screwing with this thing for a while and I know it's blanking because it's bright out here but you can see the contrast just came up set kind of suddenly and uh, it's working now uh, I, I don't know what happened just just kind of like the uh, horizontal where it wouldn't work and wouldn't work and wouldn't work and the cathode current was over 200 it just all of a sudden the horizontal just started working and it's still a mystery what did I do um, you know but after screwing with this thing and checking every voltage and capacitors and feeding signals into different areas it just started working so I don't know maybe when something sits for 45 years and uh, is in an environment like this was maybe maybe things just need to get woken back up I don't know anyway uh, I got the new um, uh, AGC pod in here and it works you can see I could turn it up here to where it just completely overloads so this thing is it's ready to go for the debates I I sure hope they happen because uh, it's said that the debates might be the highest television viewership of anything of all time so it might be a record setter for that so let's let's hope and this thing's ready to go man looking good for what I did to it which is pretty much one pot and one capacitor and let me say this I know this has been a really long video and probably most people watch six to eight minutes of it at least that's what the uh, statistics usually show so this has gone on way too long but the tuner in this thing is completely jacked up um, to adjust the fine tuning on this basically what you do is you there's a, a opening that moves around here and you stick a screwdriver down in each hole so it's like permanently set fine tuning I don't like that and also the speaker in it is shot that's why it's distorted that's why this is much clearer
My work here is done. Phillips, the tasty side of fiber. How strong is Allegra D? My congestion's out of my way strong. Needs a full alignment, there's no doubt about that, but hey, after you set up for 45 years, you'd need a full alignment too. A couple more quick notes. Um, this is a Renex CRT, and this was originally supposed to have an ion trap, and they deleted it. So it's a low hour Renex CRT, which is interesting because it was, it tested dead yesterday. It just kind of woke up two last night while I was watching the set. Seems like the more I watch the set, the better it works. It's weird. It's just like it's waking up. Any you won't be able to see it during the day, but in a in an all white scene, you can see there's some ion burn in the middle of the screen. That's one thing caused by using a straight gun on a non-aluminized CRT. That seems to be a common problem they did. Um, the this is the phono input to use this thing like an audio amp, and that switch up there that I said was bad. The turns the filament off, the CRT filament off when you put it in phono mode. I was able to bypass that and just ground this. I'm never going to use this in phono mode. I'm probably never going to use this after the debates anyway. The tuner is shot. There's no doubt that um, the tuner is... is uh, so this thing is, you know, it's a rusty crap filled novelty and it works and we have some fun with it so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, a long video a lot going on a lot of mysteries things that just fix themselves but that seems to be something that happens with these old sets it's just kinda kinda gotta burn the ghosts out of it I guess